I got the part of the captain on the, on the, the love boat. The Mary Tyler Moore Show ends. I was submitted three other scripts to do pilots of. Uh, one was a western, and the guy was like Murray Slaughter in the cowboy suit. I didn't think that was going to go. Mm -hmm. Another one was uh, a one-hour show taking place in Pittsburgh during the Depression. It was so... I, well, anyway, I didn't think that would go. It's not even a snicker. And another one, which I'll tell you about in, in a minute, and, uh, and my agent called one day and he said, uh, Aaron Spelling wants you to do a show called The Love Boat. I said, well, what do you think? He says, I think it sucks, but do you want to read it? I said, sure, I'll read it. So it sent it to my uh, house in Palm Springs. And I read it down there. And uh, I said, wow, I think this could go. And I, my wife read it. She says, I think this could go. And Sheila McCray, a wonderful actress, was visiting us that way. I said, Sheila, read this. She said, I think this could go. She eventually guessed it. And so uh, Aaron Spelling wanted to see me up at his estate to talk about it. In the meantime, Aaron Rubin from NBC calls. He used to produce the Andy Griffith show. And he had a show he wanted me to do. And he said, can you, can you stop at NBC and pick my script up before you go see Aaron? I said, sure. So I went over and he told me that <clears throat> this thing is great. It's got a three camera show. I said, okay, I'll read it. I'll, I'll read it when I can, but I have to go to Aaron. So I went to Aaron's estate. Aaron was there, Doug Kramer and Henry Coleman from the Love Boat. Uh, producers and uh, he talked about different things and he said you know he says I can work around you Gavin I know you like to do your theater you like to do your game shows and stuff he says I can work around you can have a small part this week you can have a big part he said you know just say yes I said I had no idea why he just wanted me to say yes I said um, you know Murray Slaughter was a little you know a newspaper he, he, he just writes the news for the television I said this is a captain. I mean, Murray used to open the door for everybody. Now they open the door for the captain. I said, this is a wonderful transition. I said, why are you thinking of me? He said, well, I know all the stuff you've done, and you know, we, we think you'll be right for it. And I said, well, I, I can't say yes. I promised my agent I wouldn't say yes while I was in here with you. So I go back to my agents, and I, and I have the script from Aaron Rubin, too. I said, what a great interview. He said, I told you, Aaron Spelling gives great interview. He's just he's a fabulous writer and a fabulous guy, loves people. He said, read the other script. So I went in and I read the other script, and it, it was just negative to me. They were knocking Jimmy Carter, who was the president of the United States, and I said, I, I don't want to have anything to do with negativity. I said, let's make a deal for, uh, for the love boat. And we did. Then I find out they had made it twice before. And Dick Van Patten was the doctor the first time out. Uh, then the second time out, Bernie Capel was the doctor. They had a different captain from Australia, big handsome dude. And then uh, the second time they did it, Fred Grandy was, was, uh, was the purser, Ted Lange was the bartender, and they had a different girl and a, and a, a, and a different captain a different cruise director. And so what they did, they wanted to keep the three of the guys and they wanted a new cruise director and a new captain. And I didn't know at the time, but Fred Silverman told them, get me Gavin McLeod and I think I may buy the show. I didn't know that at the time. If I knew that at the time, I really I would have held out for a lot more money. But I was very happy the way it worked out. And then uh, after I signed on, they, they had to find a Julie McCoy. And I tested with girls from all over the country from ACT in San Francisco, wonderful theater people. And they all could have played it. They were wonderful, the 11, 11 girls. And they just still didn't have it. And so we're about to shoot the pilot. I get a call from uh, Gower Champion. These are people, a lot of people, younger folks don't know, but he was, he was a great director, choreographer uh, from MGM, and he went on to do great theater. He was going to do a revival of Annie Get Your Gun with Debbie Reynolds. And he wanted to see me for a part. So I got my, uh, my musical conductor, and we worked on a number, and we brought it down there. He says, I want you to do this show. I said, OK. And then we shoot the pilot. I shoot the pilot. We have our Julie McCoy. Uh, uh, Aaron's wife saw her in was Charlie's Angels. She had one day's work on Charlie's Angels. And I said, That's the kind of girl we want, and she got it. So Lauren Tweed's got that. So we're ready to shoot. We shoot the pilot. Now, I start uh, rehearsals 
Fugawa champion and Debbie Reynolds and Annie Get Your Gun. We're going to open in San Francisco, and I'm so excited. We've got 28 pieces in the orchestra. It's going to be a big show. Six weeks up there, six weeks down in Los Angeles at the Dorothy Chandler Theater. It's a dream come true. Every night I come home and I can't sleep. I can't wait to get back to work. It's so exciting. And <coughs> we reached the point where we had like five or six days and we're going to open in San Francisco. I came home. We lived at the beach at that time and my wife said, Aaron Spelling wants you to call because they sold the love boat. Oh no, he wants you to call. I said, oh. I said, well, I'll tell you, Patty, if I have to pick between the two, I said, I'm going to stay with this musical. I said, I've waited my lifetime. I've done musicals with piano, bass, and drums, you know, and just pianos and just <laughs> little, but this is 28 pieces and seven pieces, 28 pieces. So I called Aaron and Aaron says to me, he said, they, they bought the show. They love the show. It's going to be great. They pushed the buttons and the, the, the response was the, the biggest response they've had. I said, that's exciting. I said, but Aaron, he said, I'm going to open in San Francisco in about five days. He said, well, I told you I'd work around you, so we're going to work around you. We can, you can still do the show. So that's what happened. What happened was every day at 4.30, I would finish work, and uh, the, one of his drivers would drive me to LAX airport. I'd fly to San Francisco. I'd be met, be met by someone there. They would take me. If there was time, I'd get something to eat. If not, there would be a sandwich. Take me to the theater. I'd do the show. I'd come home at the 1 o'clock flight, and uh, my wife used to say, there's a man that gets in bed with me at 2 o'clock and leaves at 6 in the morning. I hope to God it's my husband. And that's how we lived for a long, long time, and that's why my part was very small there in the beginning there. And it was a, f a fabulous thing, but what I learned from that is that Aaron Spelling was a man of his word. You know, he could have very easily, I know a lot of guys would say, forget that theater are you kidding so I told you forget about it you've got a contract with me didn't and then because he's such a great guy and because he was a he was really a mensch to me uh, he uh, we became an instantaneous hit that show became an instantaneous hit and in spite of all the critics that thought it would sink like the Titanic in spite of being called a mindless television show the audience took to it and uh, that was how that all got on. That's how I got the part. That's how we skyrocketed into being an instantaneous hit.